Our data hoarding habits seem to be contributing to climate change. In 2020, one study predicted that over the course of the year, 6.4 million tons of CO2 would be released into the atmosphere due to dark data, which is the data we store but don't use. Dark data can be anything from old emails and front door surveillance footage to social media posts and cloud storage. Storing all this data consumes massive amounts of energy and generates a lot of heat. It also requires data centers to have around-the-clock cooling, which also consumes significant amounts of energy. While some large data centers have made the shift to renewable or lower emissions energy sources, a large number still rely on fossil fuels. To give you a concept of how much 6.4 million tons of CO2 is, it's the same amount of CO2 an average car would emit if it drove 575,000 times around the Earth. This makes me wonder, what types of data in our everyday life are being stored without us knowing and contributing to greenhouse gases? In this episode of Act Now, sponsored by Samsung Memory, I'm gonna go through five data points in our everyday life that contribute to dark data and also offer ways we can improve our digital hoarding habits. Because cleaning up our data is not only good for the environment, but also good for our privacy and security. Social media posts. The first data point to explore is your social media. All your old threads, pics, and rants are being stored somewhere on a data farm. That's right, consuming energy and releasing heat. For example, one popular social media network reportedly generated 4 petabytes of data every day in 2020. That's 4 million gigabytes a day. Additionally, every post that comes with a geolocation tag takes up more memory and energy. What's the solution? Just delete your old post every so often. It's rare that you'll be going down memory lane, and chances are you also have that same photo stored elsewhere on your phone, cloud, or external hard drive. You might also be saving yourself from embarrassment by deleting old posts that no longer represent who you are. And you can do this manually, but there are services that basically nuke your timeline and delete old posts every so often. There are also services that delete your social media posts that are older than, say, maybe a year or even 30 days. Just do a quick internet search and you'll find these services. You can also turn off your geolocation and other kinds of metadata that travels with your post by going into your settings. And if you're someone who's already closed any of your social media accounts, be sure to ask for all of your data to be removed to free up server space. The Internet of Things. That smart speaker, light bulb, and coffee maker you have are all burning through massive amounts of energy as they communicate with each other and send significant amounts of data through the air. It's estimated by the International Data Corporation that the Internet of Things will contribute to a global data consumption increase to 175 setabytes by 2025. Are you equally dumbfounded by the word setabytes as I am? As you might have guessed, it's a lot. A setabyte is equal to about 1 trillion gigabytes. One estimate suggests it would take 7.5 million acres of forest to observe the amount of CO2 generated by 175 setabytes. That's a little over 500 times the size of Manhattan. Now I'm not telling you to throw out your devices, but you can reduce your IoT carbon footprint by managing the dark data these devices store. You can go into your settings and delete old logs of requests and information. Smart assistants can record and store every word you tell them, like all the times you've asked your smart assistant for the weather, measuring conversions, or random facts like what is a setabyte. So it's good practice to go back and clean up those logs every so often. Photos on the cloud. You know all those blurry or burst duplicates of the same photo you have stored on the cloud? They are making an impact on the environment. Again, it's just unused data that is burning through energy on a server somewhere. Here's an example. I take a lot of photos and videos when I go on trips or even just press events. In 2019, pre-pandemic, I averaged around 100 gigabytes of stored photos and video in the cloud a year. Now, according to an estimate, that would equate to roughly 0.2 tons of CO2 emissions. That's approximately 456 miles driven by an average car. I can technically drive from New York City to Quebec. And yes, the size of one photo is very small and consumes very little energy. But collectively, think about how many photos we take, then multiply that times how many people have a smartphone, and then access to the cloud. So why not delete duplicates, blurry photos, and outdated memes that are stored on your cloud? There are a lot of services online that will do it for you. You'll save energy and also free up some space for new memories. Spreadsheets and text documents. Similar to holding onto old photos, Holding on to old cloud documents, spreadsheets, and duplicate versions of the same document take up space on the server. 
Again, individually, these are all small file sizes, but collectively, they have an impact. Think about that one folder that has been on your work server or personal cloud account that you don't even know what's inside. There are a lot of those we keep around. But again, the solution is simple. Just delete them. I mean, unless there are important tax documents. And finally, we have surveillance video. Not only do cameras waste a lot of energy because they're always on, but they also store a lot of data on the cloud. Anywhere between 18 gigabytes a month at the lowest resolution and 140 gigabytes at the highest resolution. This includes private surveillance video from cameras we place next to our doorbells or inside our homes to keep tabs on our pets, children, and belongings. You can reduce the amount of dark data your camera stores by lowering the bitrate at which your camera records. You can also check your storage and delete old footage. So, what's the moral of the story? Delete old stuff. Much like you would get rid of things taking up space around your home or donate old clothes in your closet. It's just good practice. And it could go some way towards protecting your digital privacy as well. Ultimately, the problem lies with big organizations and how they handle their data. Just like us, they need to practice sustainable habits like implementing data lifecycle managing policies, investing in clean energy sources, buying carbon offsets, or even archiving data on external storage that doesn't consume any power. To be fair, some of the major tech companies are already taking initiative and implementing greener solutions, but more effort definitely needs to be done in the industry. At the end of the day, just remember, having a lower data footprint equates to also having a lower carbon footprint. We'd like to thank Samsung Memory for sponsoring this video. Samsung Memory is creating low-powered memory chips and SSDs that lower data center heat so the planet doesn't have to combat climate change on its own. Click the link below to learn more.